All right, in this section, we're gonna look at disassembling the main shaft. Uh, you can see I've put the, just for to try and start from the very beginning, I've actually put the cups and the uh, synchronizer back on this end. All right, they will just lift off. I'm gonna go through and, uh, and set up a bearing puller. Um, for this style of, of, of bearing removal, um, take your time. If you're not needing to replace the bearing or you're gonna, re gonna reuse it, uh, take your time. I would probably suggest that if you, uh, at this point, if you're taking it apart, you may need to change the bearing, which might mean that you're going to have to, to look at, at uh, checking the shims when you put the main shaft back in. All right, so I'll go ahead and set this up, and then we'll kind of jump back in, and when I get it set up, and we'll start to by pulling this off. Um, one thing I want to mention, uh, you can't see it here, but I have a, a clean bench, and I would suggest that when you are doing this job, you take the time, have a clean work or area. Uh, I typically will throw one of my uh, uh, old shop coats on the bench and use that as a place to place the gears. So here we have the uh, bearing splitter installed. Make sure that the bearing splitter is nice and tight, that it is gripping in onto the bottom of the bearing so that you're not just pulling the cage and the rollers off. I've got a puller installed on the top. Uh, and it's a, I know it's just a little out of the camera, but on the top we have a ratchet. We're never going to use an impact on a puller. And we're simply just going to start turning this now. And you can probably hear that it's coming off, started to loosen. Just go nice and slow. The further it comes, the easier it gets. One of those jobs where I want to be six inches taller. All right, so we got the bearing off. Nothing dropped, nothing fell. And set that to the side. Take my puller apart. So now I'm going to start taking the rest of the gears off the main shaft. But before I do that, I want to kind of drive home um, what is turning on the shaft and what is not turning on the shaft. You can see right now. Uh, where I've lifted that, that first synchronizer off, that that synchronizer inside of the center section here, it is splined. That is going to fit over this splined uh, gear as well. So this spline has an internal spline and an external spline. And the reason it has an internal spline is that it is splined to the main shaft. So when it sits there, it cannot turn on the shaft. Unlike the gear below it, which is a speed gear and is turning on a bearing between the inside of the gear and the shaft. What we're going to use with the synchronizer or do with the synchronizer is move uh, down and lock this part of the gear to this part of the gear. All right. So one thing I'm going to try to do as we are going through this and disassembling the main shaft is I'm going to take my parts off in order and I'm going to place them on the bench in order but upside down. So basically I'm going to flip them over so that when I go to pick them up they're going to go back on like that. All right? So that first spline gear comes off and now you can see on the inside of this that we have a smooth wall in here, and that smooth wall would be turning on these uh, needle bearings, all right? So I'm gonna put the needle bearings over here, and we're gonna leave them in that gear so they don't get out of place, and then we're down to the next thing. All right, so I've got my pliers now. Uh, I'm going to work on this uh, snap ring, all right? It is an external snap ring, and what we're gonna try and do is, is, is spread it open, and then, lift it up nice and even and then we're going to use a little screwdriver 
screwdriver and we're just going to pry it up to the top. All right. Walk it around. Don't try not to to stretch it too much in in, in one direction. I don't want to overstretch it outward, and I don't want to uh, force one end up all the way so that I end up distorting the snap ring. Right. Now, see that snap ring was sitting there and it was holding this thrust washer in place. All right? That keeps it from, from trying to, to ride up against the other gear. So I'm going to take that off. We'll put it in, in the row. And now I want you to pay attention that when I take this off, there is another component in here, which is a small uh, ball. In some cases, it can be a pin. Um, I'm going to grab a magnet. We have an indent in the shaft. We have a notch in, in, the, in the thrust washer. And that is so that when my uh, thrust washer is, is running or let's say a gear is driving beside it, I don't want that uh, rotation of the gear to transfer through the thrust washer and start turning the other gear as well. Because anytime we have two gears uh, trying to drive the, the main shaft, we have a serious problem. All right? So we'll flip that over with the snap ring and then we're into the next gear. All right? And you, you can see that we just start, keep going the same way. Again, another, another gear, we have a smooth bore on the inside. We have a set of uh, locking teeth on the outside, which is going to be uh, what my synchronizer meshes into of another set of roller bearings which are going to run in between this gear I just removed and the shaft. So when it is in place, that gear turns on the shaft and does not affect the shaft until we lock the synchronizer and now that gear won't turn. All right, unlock it, and the where we go. Upside down on the bench, bearings off inside the gear. All right, and then we just keep going. All right, another synchronizer. So we have another snap ring here now that is under the last synchronizer we took off. Um, there's no difference in the way that this is done um, the rest of the way down on the shaft. Um, what you will find uh, when we get down to the, after we would have taken this one off, the uh, first and reverse gears will come from the other end, which would mean I would have to take the bearing off the other end and slide them out the other way. Uh, I don't think there's any value in that if you understand how this goes uh, up together and, and what drives and what doesn't drive. So we, we start with, we flip the synchronizer upside down again, we put it on. There's my synchronizer. You can see that it's, it, it's not turning, only the disc are turning. I do want to talk about the disc in here as well. This one is a little uh, uh, newer style and it actually used like a, a brake material, a, a brake lining material on it in order to uh, activate or, or work the synchronizer. Um, the other things you commonly find in here are uh, brass and aluminum. And we'll look at some of them uh, with a, in another section. Uh, I'll grab some other ones because they have some uh, unique characteristics on them as well in order to cut through the oil and channel the oil away. So next, we're going to put on my bearings. I'm going to flip my gear back over. Make sure it's running down. Now. Uh, a key thing to remember and be careful of, you don't lose it, is to place the ball back into its detent and then position the thrust washer. Right, and you can see that now. Now that, that ball is locking the thrust washer from rotating. So if I have, and I'll take it back off to put the, the, the snap ring on. But if I have this gear driving, I don't want my thrust washer to start to drive and then cause it to have an input as well. 
So next we're going to put the snap ring back on. <coughs> a, a good set of snap ring pliers here will be a real plus. All right, you could hear that snap in. You want to make sure that it's fully seated and not going to ride out. Carrying on, we've now put my bearings back on. Put my gear back on. <clears throat> we put my synchronizer drive back on. And then we can replace the bearing.